Good evening and welcome to the Baby Bunting Live Series Episode 20. I'm Elise and I've got Amanda here with me from Ergo Pouch Australia. So tonight we're going to be discussing different sleep options with the Ergo Pouch range for you. So if you'd like to answer it, have any questions answered, just jump onto our Facebook Live comments and pop them in there and we'll get to them at the end of the session. But also, if you'd like to put any comments of any of the products that you see tonight that you love, you can go into a drawer to win a full pack, a winter pack of Ergo Pouch for your little one to get through these colder seasons at the moment and just keep them nice and snugly and warm. So Amanda, welcome to Baby Bunting Thank tonight. You. Can you please give me a bit of a rundown on about Ergo Pouch Australia? Yeah, sure. Well, thank you for having me, Elise. It's great to be here and hello to everybody at home. Um, so for those who don't know the brand, Ergo Pouch Australia uh, it was started um, around 10 years ago by a local mum, Alina Sack. Um, she had a terrible sleeper with her first son, Xavier, which I'm sure a lot of people listening can relate to. And she tried everything she could to get him to sleep, and he was really having none of it. Um, he even failed sleep school. Um, he was one of the very few babies who didn't, you know, respond to any gentle settling. Um, and Alina was really at her wit's end. And she had noticed that Xavier was getting very tangled overnight in his sleeping bag. Um, he was waking up a lot, um, uncomfortable, um, you know, often sweaty. And she thought, well, maybe if I could design a product um, that was more comfortable for him to sleep in, he might sleep a bit easier. And there was really nothing on the market at that time that was in natural fibres. Um, so Alina got her sewing machine out and she um, created what we call the very first um, ergo pouch. And it was ergonomically designed um, kind of with... Um, you know, the same design techniques you might put into sportswear to, um, I guess, contour the body, be comfortable to sleep in, and was made with natural fibres to help Xavier um, regulate his temperature overnight. And, you know, it wasn't the magic cure, but it did go a long way to helping him um, become more settled and sleep through on his sleep journey. And, you know, Alina started making them for her friends um, who have babies. Um, their kids slept really well in it, they told their friends, uh, and 10 years later we're the market leader in Australia for baby sleeping bags and we're um, distributed globally. Um, so where we are today with our ergo pouch journey uh, is, um, I guess really we're still back at our roots of why Alina started the brand in the first place. So, you know, we're Every parent listening, I'm sure, will agree um, that as parents we all want our babies to sleep through the night and I'm sure every parent will agree that that's impossible. Um, there are so many things that happen in the early years that can really interrupt sleep in the first five years, whether it's um, you know developmental milestones, growth spurts, teething, travel, um, whatever it may be. Um, there's a lot of bumps along that sleep journey. And our philosophy at Ergo Pouch isn't about, you know, finding the perfect night's sleep. It's really about understanding how children develop and grow through those early years and providing products that help them through that journey, that cater to their special needs at different ages and stages, and really support the parents and the family as a whole throughout that journey. Um, and, you know, we don't have the silver bullet or the magic cure to sleep. I don't think anybody does. Um, but we do know that with, you know, a product that's designed for a child with them in mind, that they're warm and comfortable in, and tools that give the parents confidence um, can really go a long way throughout that sleep journey to um, helping the whole family get some more sleep. Um, so that's really important to us, as is the um, organic and natural fibre side of our brand. So. All of our products are made with organic and natural fibres. Um, they're all TOG rated, which we'll talk um, more on in a bit. Um, and that simply means that um, they're all rated um, for insulation and warmth, so you don't need to use blankets with them. Um, and they're all designed with safe sleep in mind. And I think that's so important that I guess, you know, as parents, you know, I wish that this was around a little bit earlier than mm, 10 years. Yep, My okay. son's 21, <laughs> so it wasn't there yet. But, um, you know, you don't know. You know, it's something that is so hard yeah. that, you know, we as parents, you know, we snuggle ourselves into bed. We've yep. got these big fluffy dinners yep. 
and then we're left with this little one going well I wear this amount of clothes yes. to go to bed yep. but I don't know whether the child needs to wear yes. the same amount as me yeah absolutely yeah it's a big thing and it's and um, you know I had a girlfriend who um, she had her baby at a private hospital she wasn't showing how to sleep her baby with a swaddle or anything like that and she left the hospital still not really knowing um, how to sleep and, and the midwives kind of failed her on that and it's it, you know we, we as a new parent it is very confusing and it's very hard to navigate sleep in the early days um, and so our range um, I, I guess we've really tried to help demystify and solve that for new parents um, firstly with our organic fibers so organic uh, and you know natural fiber sleepwear is really important for a new baby for a few reasons and the first is um, the breathability factor so you know organic cotton bamboo they're breathable fibers which means you know they let heat, heat out and they t uh, they regulate body temperature and that's really important because a newborn baby actually can't regulate its body temperature and a very young baby who's just learning that skill um, you know can't do it with the same efficiency as as adults can um, so having a sleeping product that um, can help regulate that temperature uh, not overheat them that can be very dangerous um, and keep them safe uh, without blankets is, is really important for a new a new baby so I would encourage parents to check the label on your products um, check that it's a natural fiber there's no polyester or synthetic fibers because um, that, that is really important for safe sleep in a new baby um, secondly so our um, organic cotton our fibers um, they're all non-toxic certified as well as being GOTS certified um, so we dye the products with water-based dyes and essentially it's a very skin friendly safe product for a new baby who has very porous skin so no chemicals are going to leach into the skin so that gives a bit of peace of mind for new parents as well and thirdly um, organic cotton is grown and farmed, um, harvested, manufactured in a way that is a lot gentler on the environment than its regular cotton counterpart or synthetic fibres. Um, and we uh, strongly believe in sustainability at Ergo Pouch. Um, not only that, the fibres that we manufacture with are premium and they will last for many years and many children. So that means less consumption over time and good value for money as well. And it's, I guess, fantastic that the range that you have. So you've spoken about the breathability, but mm -hmm. you've also brought yep. in about TOG ratings. Yes. So yep. a lot of our consumers don't understand what a TOG rating yep. is. So if you could just run through Absolutely. to give us a guide, that would yes. be fantastic. And I, I have two kids, and when my firstborn came along, I knew about swaddling, and I knew, you know, I knew some basic things, but I didn't know what a TOG was, probably until he was about six months old. Um, and then I kind of worried that maybe I, he was too cold or I, I don't know. Anyway, so it's, it's a great one to talk about. So um, put simply, a TOG stands for a thermal overall grade. And it's a unit of insulation and warmth in bedding um, and measures, um, <coughs> I guess, how, how um, warm the baby is when it's sleeping. So I just want to talk through it, this for a moment. Um, so... Ergo Pouch have four different TOG ratings for all of our products. So the lighter the fabric, um, the I guess the lighter the TOG, so a 0.2 TOG, such as this one here, um, would be used in room temperatures of say 24 degrees Celsius or over. And the heavier the fabric, the warmer the TOG. So for example, this is a uh, 2.5 TOG, and that's a lot thicker, a lot more padded. Um, generates more warmth and that would be suitable in room temperatures um, from around 17 degrees to 21 degrees Celsius. Now, if this all sounds very confusing and there's lots of numbers and you're not good at math, don't worry, we've solved the problem for you. So we developed a really robust TOG rating system with the products 10 years ago and with every pouch we provide this free room thermometer. It reads the temperature of your baby's sleep space and it tells you exactly what TOG product to use and how to layer underneath that product to keep your baby warm and comfortable without the need for blankets, which is important for safety. 
So this comes free with every ergo pouch. So for example, right now I can see in here it's 22 degrees and in that temperature I could choose to either dress my child in a mild um, one tog pouch with a one tog layer underneath or a warmer 2.5 tog pouch with a light layer underneath. So a lot of parents have told us that this is their saving grace. It's what they look at every nap time. They keep one in the nursery, in the bedroom, at grandma's house, in the suitcase when they travel, and it's just a lifesaver to have on hand. Um, so it really does take the guesswork out of dressing your child for sleep. And I think that's the thing. It is an unknown for a new <coughs> parent to know what they've got to wear. Mm -hmm. And I guess yes. also with that, sometimes your child might have a slight different temperature. Yes, they could be sick or... Yeah. So how would you recommend that they check that? Just to make sure that with all the right, what they've followed your guide, yes. got the right underlay yep. on, they've got the right, you know, sleeping bag over the top. Yes. And still it may be slightly off. Yep, they might, they, their child might still be waking or, yep. you know, might, you know, have cold hands or whatnot. So I think this is where we go back to good old fashioned <laughs> mum and dad, use your hands and use your intuition. So a very simple way to check if your baby is warm enough for sleep is just place a hand um, kind of at their nape on their back. If their body feels warm to touch, that's perfect. If they feel a little clammy or a little hot, they're probably overheating, so maybe peel back a layer. If they feel cold there, then they're too cold and we need to add a layer on. Um, a lot of parents say to us, I'm following your TOG guide, but my baby's hands feel freezing. And um, the hands are not uh, an accurate gauge for the body temperature. Um, you know, the hands and the feet are the last things to receive a <laughs> blood circulation. If your baby still feels warm on the back of their nape, that's what's important. So I guess for our viewers out there who've got a new baby, where will they start when they come in to look for an ergo? Pouch? Yes, yeah, I know it can be very confusing. So our entire range is designed for what we call age and stage. So uh, I mentioned earlier, there are a lot of things that happen in those early years that really impact how a baby or a child is going to sleep. So what we've done is a lot of research um, in understanding the different physical, um, mental growth spurts, um, different milestones that impact um, different ages along that sleep journey in the first five years, and our range is designed around that. So I'm going to um, start at the starting point with a newborn baby and walk you through um, the product you would use for a newborn and then we'll have a look at some of the other products in the range as well. Fantastic, Amanda. So here's Coco, everybody, <laughs> named for our cocoons. Um, we're going to show our product that you would use right from birth. As soon as they come out, this is a safe product to use from birth. So our cocoon swaddle bag... Um, got an example for you. <laughs> Coco is made to be like a real baby, so we treat her with care. Um, our cocoon swaddle bag is used right from birth. Now, for those who um, don't know what a swaddle is or why swaddling uh, is important or useful, um, a swaddle, I guess, is designed to help control a startle reflex, which a new baby is born with. So a startle reflex is kind of like a jolt that um, a newborn baby might have um, and that jolt can sometimes cause large movements which wake them during sleep. So a swaddle is designed to help control the startle reflex as well as mimic the womb. So that close confined feeling of the womb that helps them feel settled. Um, a swaddle is designed to kind of be firm, not tight um, and really mimic the womb. So our cocoon swaddle bag um, which we designed as one of the early products in the range 10 years ago, is a zip-up swaddle. Um, so no or origami wrapping <laughs> with a wrap. Um, it was the first zip-up swaddle in the world. Um, and I'll talk you through some of the great features of the Cocoon Swaddle Bag and why it's perfect for a newborn. So it does come in um, three different TOG ratings so that we can, you know, keep the baby comfortable throughout all the seasons and temperatures. And it's designed um, with a bell-shaped, so uh, it's hip friendly. Um, it's approved by the International um, Hip Dysplasia Institute as being hip friendly um, and a comfortable shape to work with. So the first thing um, that we notice about the cocoon swaddle on Coco is that her arms are in, in a swaddled position. So 
the great thing about the cocoon swaddle is that you can sleep your baby with their arms across their chest. Um, if you know they like that position, perhaps they like their arms down next to them, perhaps they like one arm near their mouth for self-settling. And the cocoon swaddle bag has enough stretch to allow the baby those different positions. Now, the great thing about the cocoon swaddle, um, not all babies sleep the same. And there are a lot of babies who actually don't like being swaddled at all. And that's totally normal. If you have a baby who doesn't like being swaddled, that's fine. The cocoon swaddle bag has poppers at the side, which you can open and you can free the arms to sleep in an arm out position, um, however they like, and you still have a warm, safe sleeping product on your baby that doesn't require any blankets. I'm just gonna blow my nose, sorry, give me one sec. So if you um, have a child who prefers to sleep with a bit of freedom, then that's a great solution for you. But the other thing that the cocoon is perfect for is when your baby starts to roll. So a swaddled baby, when they're showing signs of wanting to roll, you may notice them kind of twisting during playtime or sleep. You may notice them fighting the swaddle and they don't want to be put in it. And all of these signs are, are telling a parent that the baby's getting ready to roll over and that usually happens around four months. It could be earlier, it could be later, and that's totally normal. So um, the most important thing is that when a baby starts to roll, that they're transitioned to arms out sleeping for their own safety. If a baby who's swaddled rolls over face down in a cot, they don't quite have the neck strength at that age to be able to lift their head and clear it to the side for unobstructed breathing. So they do need their, their arms to help them with that. So with the cocoon swaddle bag, when your baby's showing signs of rolling, you can simply open up the poppers and release their arms for arms out sleeping. That can happen, you know, one arm at a time over a couple of days to really help that transition. Or you can add something like a butterfly cardi, which is designed to be worn over the top of any sleeping bag. And it has little pockets that make that transition a little slower um, to go from arms in to a little butterfly <laughs> position to arms out. So um, the cocoon really gives you value for money in that it's both your swaddle as well as baby's first sleeping bag. And I must also mention the two-way zip is a lifesaver for midnight nappy changes, which happen often. Um, makes it nice and easy to change the baby's nappy without having to take the swaddle off. And it's also safe and suitable to use if you're feeding overnight, whether that's breast or bottle feeding, you can keep the swaddle on them and it just means less disruption um, through nighttime feedings and getting them back to sleep a bit faster. Um, so yeah, it comes in three TOG ratings. So um, this is the one TOG you see here and the, uh, the 2.5 TOG is um, suitable for the cooler temperatures over winter or if you have air conditioning on in your house. Um, and it's filled with 100% organic cotton. It's all natural, so it's perfect for a newborn who's, who's born around this time. So after the cocoon swaddle, thank you, Coco, I'll move you back over here. After the cocoon swaddle, um, once your baby is arms out sleeping, um, the next product in our range is for infants, and that is our Jersey sleeping bag. This is a great option for swaddled babies to go into because it has a slim fit design and so it, it, it has that comforting firmness feel to it um, of a swaddle um, and that's familiar for a baby who's transitioning from swaddle to sleeping bag. So we find that's a great option for a younger you know, infant around four, five, six months. Um, and the Jersey um, sleeping bag is organic cotton with a little bit of elastane again to help it be comfortable and a little bit stretchy during sleep. Um, we keep the bell-shaped design and two-way zip for the parents. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, the other option we have for infants is our sheeting bag. So our sheeting bag is made of a, um, a woven uh, organic cotton. So. It's kind of like the feel of a sheet on your own bed. It's a 400 thread count. It's a little bit lax. 
Um, and it has stretchy um, side panels for ergonomic movement to help prevent tangling. So this is the original design that Alina designed 10 years ago and it still stands today. Uh, again, bow shape designed for healthy hips um, and freedom. It's slightly wider than the jersey bag. So if you have an infant who does like a, a bit more room in their sleeping bag, this is a great one for you. Um, this one here is a 2.5 tog, so that's suitable for you know, room temperatures 17 to 21 degrees. If it's a little cooler in your house overnight and you want something a bit warmer, it does come in an option with sleeves as well. Um, the sleeves have little handcuffs on the end to keep the little hands warm too. So that's a great one for those of us here in Melbourne <laughs> where it's a bit cooler overnight. Um, so you'd be in your jersey bag or your sheeting sleeping bag for infants. Now when you hit toddlerhood <laughs> and your little one starts to move a bit more, perhaps they're walking or trying to walk, we often bump into a milestone where they suddenly don't like the confines of their sleeping bag, they're rejecting it, they're becoming fussier, harder to settle at night and this is where we go over to our sleep suit bag. So our sleep suit bag, um, one Australia's favourite sleeping bag four years in a row. It's one of the most popular products in our ranges and it's really designed for those tricky toddlers. So the sleep suit bag um, can be either a sleeping bag or it can transition into a sleep suit with legs, which you see here, um, using the zips. So if you have a toddler who's fighting the sleeping bag at night, I really suggest you give one of these a go. Um, the legs mean that it has more freedom for um, the child in the cot, but because it is still in the style of a sleeping bag, it keeps the feet warm, the feet aren't free yet, um, so it does still have that kind of contained feel of a sleeping bag, but with leg, with leg freedom. Um, and again, with um, the cooler temperatures over winter, um, the 2.5 and 3.5 tog sleep suit bag have, have the sleeves as well for a bit of extra warmth there. Again, bell shaped design um, and it's a four way zip really. Um, so, you know, it's still easy to change a nappy overnight if you need to um, with using the zips. And finally, for our preschoolers who are perhaps graduating from their cot to a big bed and they're learning how to use blankets but they haven't quite got the hang of it, we have our sleep onesie. So um, we can see it's quite different to the sleep suit bag in that it has proper legs and you know feet that come out. Um, we do have um, foot cuffs um, to keep feet warm. But this is a really great option for a three-year-old or a four-year-old or even a five-year-old, they go up to size five, who's transitioning out of their cot, they're into a big bed, they're learning how to use blankets, but they kick them off and, and they often wake up cold. Um, it comes in four different togs, so you can adjust um, you know, how warm or, or how cool you need them to be when they're using, your, using the blankets or a sheet. Um, so it's, yeah, it's a great option for, for the older kids. It's like a big, thick, warm pyjama. Uh, and again, it's all tog rated, so you would just follow the what to wear guide for how you might layer that underneath for your preschooler. And then we have, um, in addition to the core range, we have our layers. So our layers are simply like pyjamas, so what you would wear underneath the pouch. Um, they start at newborn uh, and they do go all the way up um, to size two in this style and then we have pyjamas for the older kids. Um, but the great thing about our layers is that they're also tog rated. So um, what that means for our one tog layers, they're like an extra thick pyjama. So for parents who are looking for extra warmth underneath the sleeping bag, um, this is the only warm tog rated layer in Australia. Um, these are a great option here. And we also have several useful tools in the range if you're coming up against other problems. For example, um, if you're finding you're wearing a jersey bag and you, your child might still feel a bit cool, you can pop the little arm warmer cardigan over the top of their sleeping bag. This is a great one for those transseasonal months where it might be quite warm when you put them down to bed at you know 7 p.m., 7.30. 
but it gets colder as the night goes on. So this is a really easy one that you can pop on at you know, 10, 11 p.m. when the parents are going to bed, pop that on them for an extra layer overnight without disrupting their sleep. And um, you know, other tools such as if you're finding your child is waking up early when the sun rises and you really want that extra half an hour of sleep, we have our window blocker, which is um, a non-toxic um, decal. It's a static cling decal, which blocks 100% of sunlight. It's easy to apply, easy to peel off, easy to reapply. Uh, so it's a great option for darkening um, your baby's room for sleep. And that can also help a newborn baby understand their sleep cycles as well. That's our range. Well, that's fantastic, Amanda. That is amazing. And I think the knowledge that we've just passed on to our audience will help them go through that transition of having that new one and to hopefully get some, some sleep at night. Great. Um, so we just wanted to thank you so much for coming. Thank you for um, having me. And just giving our audience all that information. But please remember that if you jump onto our comments on the actual live series there to pop in you know, what feature of the items that you like tonight so you can go into that prize drawer to win that whole pack of the, the Ergo pouches there for your new little one. So thank you so much to everyone and we'll see you again soon on our next live series. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone.